And so everybody was gambling on this Sunday night. They were making books, I think the term is, and having sweepstakes as to what time she would get in so many minutes past so and so. My father would have nothing to do with it. And so he went to bed quite early, for him anyway. And my mother sat down to sew and read. And she looked up at him, he was reading. He said he'd got a very interesting book. But quite quickly, he went to sleep and she got up and took the book from him and set her down again. And she said at 10 minutes to 12, she felt a slight bump. And she said it was just like a train pulling into a station. It just jerked. It was very slight, but she said she knew that it was this dreadful something and she wakened my father. She wakened me and my father said no, he wasn't going up on deck again after the night before. But she literally pulled him out of bed and made him go up. And she then said she was going to dress me and I being Sleepy and very naughty, said I wasn't going to be dressed, nothing to be dressed for, I came back to bed. My father came back very quickly because he could get up to the boat deck in the lift very quickly from where our cabin was. And um, he came back and he picked me up and wrapped his blanket tightly around me as if I were a baby. And my mother said nothing to him, and I used to say to her sometimes, years afterwards, I can't understand why you didn't say to him, What was it? which she certainly did not say. And she said, I didn't have to say what was it. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was this dreadful something that I had to live with for months. And there was nothing more I could say. So he put his very thick coat on her and put another one on himself. And without any words at all, we went out of the cabin and into the lift and up onto the boat deck. Now, if we hadn't done that at that time, I very much doubt I'd be talking to you today because, as you know, there were less than, uh, there was accommodation for less than 800 people in the lifeboats and she was carrying 2,200. So it was a question as who was there in time to get into one of the all too few lifeboats. Well, they weren't launched very quickly because at first no one thought anything was going to happen. But my father went away and spoke to an officer and he said, um, they are going to launch the lifeboats, but you'll all be back on board for breakfast. And so they launched these boats, and my father helped. He knew a lot about the sea. And he put me in the lifeboat and told me to be good. He said to me, hold Mummy's hand. And I thought he was coming after me, but he didn't. Then it dawned on me, of course, that he wasn't coming, that I wouldn't see him anymore. And that collision was 10 minutes to 12 and the Titanic sank at 20 past 2. So if we had had enough lifeboats, no one would have died that night at all. And it would have been a nine days wonder that the ship sank on its maiden voyage. It didn't matter, nobody died, that would have been that. And here we are all these years after with the whole world still interested in the Titanic.